traveling light with your DSLR. All right, cheers. Welcome back to After Hours Photography. We are here talking about our DSLRs and how to travel a little bit lighter out there. Um, it's a hot topic now. We're not going to get into the Micro Four Thirds. We've already covered that in another episode. If you're interested in Micro Four Thirds and smaller cameras, check out episode two. And um, we're going to start off with Sprague here. He's got lots of props and things that we're going to show off. So Sprague, how you been? I've been awesome. Just All right. have we're going to introduce people while you tell me how awesome you are. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Sprague. Yeah. This is Susie, no, this is not Scott, Susie. and my name is Nick. So yeah. Sprague, you're awesome. So Tell us a little bit about um, some of your experiences. You're, you're the traveling, um, the roaming gnome kind of, to say in our group here. So I'll let you start off. Well, I'm like most people when I first started out, you know, bought everything, brought everything, and I had a big backpack full of stuff. And it seemed like a good idea until you got about an hour into your walk wherever you were, and suddenly you're dying. It just, you know, sweat rolling off of you. And, um, the other thing is you're trying to you know get your pictures taken and you're constantly fumbling for uh, lenses and filters and gear and so what i decided is to think about this and consolidate it to what do i use most often and a lot of it was looking at my pictures in lightroom and just taking a look at the focal lengths i used mostly and so what i came down with is that for me the best thing to do was to start out with a good dslr that had a really high iso so i had um, minimal need for supplemental flash and for a tripod for that matter. So I think that's probably the best thing that you can do is uh, so that you can shoot inside in churches or venues and you can crank your ISO up to uh, 12,000, 25,000 if you need to and shoot without having to flash or a tripod. And the other thing is to get into a couple really good lenses. And what I shoot with most is the 2470, that one. And this is probably what I shoot about probably 80 to 90 percent of my pictures with because most of it you're filling the frame, you're coming in close, and this is good for wide angle shots as well. And I used to carry this, but this thing is a brick. And when you've got this hanging off your leg and banging along like this all day long, pretty soon you just want to throw it in the river. So <laughs> what I came up with was something a little bit smaller and this is a 7300 versus a 7200 and the thing is this one is like a 4 to 5.6 depending on whether you're at 70 or 300 millimeters where this is a 2.8 all the way through from 70 to 200 so that's what makes it bigger and heavier but what I found is that the difference between if you're shooting at 70 millimeters to bump up to 200 millimeters you really weren't adding that much to your um, um, focal lengths for carrying this because unless you're shooting at 200 um, you're not going to use this but this thing is good from 70 all the way to 300 so you'll find that you can put this on and use it quite a bit more so uh, basically those are and my this, this two favorite zooms lenses. in and out essentially um, so you right. get a little bit of <laughs> Scott, and this Scott is a great lens but it's the greatest lens <laughs> we, we nobody ever uses <laughs> yeah but this is Scott's favorite lens, so... <laughs> it is one of my favorite yeah, lenses. Yeah. No, I mean, but you're right. You're right about, about you know... I, I would travel... I have, like, my kit, my camera kit, and it's everything that I can possibly use in the camera kit. But, yeah, when you go traveling, and then you come home, and you realize, how much of that stuff did I actually use? And you're just lugging it around, and, you know, you think, oh, well, I'll have my filters in there, and, oh, I'll have you know, these batteries, uh, these extra batteries and these extra memory cards and my battery chargers and, you know, on and on and on. You got your whole list. And then you get get on your trip and you don't use half that stuff. I love when we go to like have a super and there's no plugs and we have battery chargers. Yeah, you got like, battery chargers. Like, bring yeah. this? You know, plug, plug it, it in a tree. tree. <laughs> <laughs> now what do I do? You know, <laughs> carried it down there. Well, the horse carried it down there. So uh, another thing that we can chat about is um, lightening your load is going back to some of the entry level lenses that may have come with your camera. Um, they're a lot lighter. They're all made out of plastic. Um, so if you want to tell us about this some of that This one's a mid-level. Um, oh, this mid -level? is Yeah, this one is the, kit, yeah. the baby brother to the lens, one of my right? favorite ones. Mm -hmm. uh, no, this is a newer, this is the 10 to 18. 
This is the wide angle, um, kind of optimized for a crop sensor. And um, I accidentally uh, allowed my other one, my 10 to 22, to get smashed. <laughs> it rejoined when nature. It did. It went back to the uh, lenses in the sky. And, uh, and I really missed it. But I wasn't sure whether I wanted to reinvest in that or if I kind of wanted to... Uh, think about another new lens and so in the meantime I got the 10 to 18 and I love it and it's lighter um, and it's I'm really using the wider range of the lens anyway so I'm not really losing much between the 18 and the 22 um, so I really like that these, these bounce or no these ones this help one us. does it bounces once oh, oh once oh, That's it. only once yeah so, um, so moving on from that stuff, um, you do weddings and events and different things like that. So if you're traveling, not so much for street stuff like um, Sprague was speaking about, um, what do you use as far as your lighting? Um, you were showing me some of this kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, speed lights all the way, 100%. Um, I mean, I, I do like to use, you know, studio strobes and things like that for weddings. But, but yeah. when you get on a plane and, and you have a 50-pound yeah. limit on your on your stuff that you have to check in, which you don't want to put expensive gear in there, and you can only carry a certain amount on the plane now, they're really kind of cracking down on that. You can't always bring, you know, an alien B or a yeah. or something. Um, I usually carry two speed lights because it fits in one bag. Um, small modifiers like they like these little rogue. I love these rogue flash benders. I use the rogue flash benders all the time. And Love that one them. has a soft box attachment on it? This thing's got right. everything. I mean, you can be a snoot, it's got grids, it's got gels, it's got... Yeah, you can just rip the front yeah, of that Yeah, this thing off. comes right off and it changes into something else. And I mean, these things are great. Yeah, um, and, and, and the best thing about these is, is that they fold up and they're compact. small and compact and they're just easy. You can so have it in your pocket if you had to. Yeah. And Easiest so, softbox you can ever get. You know, exactly. And so you put, you know, put a couple of those on, on lightweight stands. And even, um, I don't even sometimes bring stands. I know we had a clip around here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sprague's yeah. clip. Yeah, there you go. Instead of bringing light stands, I mean, these things are great. You just... It's a Manfrotto clip. And yeah, you just clip them to just anywhere, and you save yourself the weight of a light stand. For or that. always uh, keep your foot... In yeah, because a lot of times we'll put these away, and in our you know bag or our bin or whatever, and then you'll get somewhere and you want to set this flash up, and you don't have any way to stabilize it. It's pretty nifty, a little ball head on it, and it everything. It's fantastic. It and then of course you've got this uh, um, remote trigger, so you can uh, if you have two or three flashes, then you can set it up and just set all your uh, settings remotely from here and uh, yeah, fire and straight off. Yeah, and the, the, the thing they is, is they're built that. in, so you know. All of that, you know, I, I remember, you know, a few years ago, you'd have like a whole slew of pocket wizards and, ra you know, now the radios are built in. So that saves like a ton of weight and mm -hmm. space in your bag. Um, yeah, the newer flashers, flashes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flashers. Flashers. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, three of those will be <laughs> less than the weight of an alien bee and, you know. So you want to show that off. You were talking about the grid. Well, sure. Yeah, it's um, got a, if you want just a little grid in the background, then it's just got a little uh, cuff that fits over your strobe. And uh, basically this little thing Hold comes off. <laughs> and then let's just take this off. And then yeah, those things can, are pretty slick. Yeah. And so let's just you know, push this out. And back here you've got couple little grids so you can um, make adjustments there, put it back in. And then it also has got a set of Color gels, gels right? so uh, like this. And then also the other one has got a set of gels with it as well. So those are pretty easy to carry if you decide that you want a CTO and throw it on there for um, supplemental light. But yeah, cool. if, if you do need supplemental light, um, this is a really um, easy kit and very light to um, travel with if, if you don't then so high ASO flashes if you need them for portraiture and then um, I know you said that you sometimes like to ditch a tripod but you have the opposite where you'd like to bring tripods. I like to have a tripod with me if I'm doing outdoor travel photography and stuff like that um, but I do find that if it is a big heavy clunky tripod it's good for an anchor when the flood comes through and that's stuff. true that's true um, <laughs> 
the uh, the bigger tripods, sometimes I won't necessarily go as far as I want with my gear to set up the tripod and take the shot. So it's helpful to have one that is um, traveler friendly. So this is a carbon fiber model and I like that it has twist uh, adjustments on it box. rather than, yeah. yeah, rather than the, the clip ones. Uh, I've been told that these are better, especially in just frequent use and wear and tear because they don't end up losing their strength, I guess. The clips can slip and stuff. I haven't really experienced that with the clip ones or the Yeah, they do. The they they kind of break and wear out after yeah, a Yeah, and these, these have been really uh, reliable, and I've had this in every temperature. It's been in ocean surf. It's been in the desert. It's been in the snow uh, all over. This is um, pretty lightweight, and then it it is, a, this particular model is separate the legs from the ball head, and one of the drawbacks of a lot of very compact tripods is that their center post, in order to give you the full height, is going to extend up like this, and this is a point of weakness for any of the travel tripods. Um, the bigger ones, you'll see the full-size tripods will mount your camera closer uh, to uh, the neck uh, or the base of the neck of the tripod and so this does cause a little bit of movement if you're in uh, a lot of wind that kind of stuff uh, but it is somewhat mitigated by the fact that this is carbon fiber so it's reinforced in multiple directions and that's different from aluminum and uh, just by comparison's sake now this one's a little bit smaller and you'll probably recognize this because it's very colorful model and I like it because it's colorful, but it is aluminum and it is almost as heavy as this. There's a little bit different form factor, so you can see how this is smaller. The way it folds up, it's smaller. Um, but in terms of sturdiness, this is the better bet. And uh, this just isn't built for real, like field use for a DSLR with a full size lens and that kind of stuff. You'll, you'll still get movement. I still am of the thought of the opinion that it's better than no tripod. Um, some might argue that, but um, I think that having a tripod is better uh, than not having one if you're going to shoot landscape. Well, you like purple, don't you? I like purple. lenses that bounce off those. Two. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're better than poof. So, um, so bags, um, as we, as we get towards, um, some more gear here, um, you have a bag there and I know Scott has my bag over there. So let's get into, um, showing like the size of these bags off. And, and one of the things I wanted to mention about this is, um, I never, I've never seen that one by think tank that you, that you guys have, but this is what I wear. It's a, it's a, it's a think tank belt pack. And, um, I bought it a while ago from them and I, I use it quite a bit for hiking. Um, and I love it, but if I want to bring this and my backpack, this doesn't pack down very light. This one does, but like this doesn't. So I almost need a whole nother suitcase to pack this into where spray came over with this one tonight. So um, I may be looking into some different bags because you could, these are a modular. You could take stuff on and off of here. So why don't you show them what you have? Because this is great if um, you know, you're car camping or you, you pull over and you just get right to where you have to go. But if I have to fly to New Jersey and then go hiking, I don't want to pack this in my suitcase because now I have no room for clothes. Well, these are also padded. These are very yeah. padded and that's, that's great. But for, we're talking about traveling. So, you know, so show, show them what you have is the lighter belt, right? Yeah, this is the same thing. This is a think tank belt. And so it clips the same way, but these uh, pouches um, basically compress flat. Totally so flat. Um, and what I do when I travel is I actually have a shapeshifter bag, which is a bigger pack that I put all of my equipment in uh, for travel. And so when I put this in my bag without these pouches on, um, I'll just lay this belt around the perimeter of my bag so it doesn't take up any space. And then these things, you can either lay flat in your bag or you can use them to just put socks or uh, shampoos or, you know, that type of stuff in there and, you know, to you know, help them pack for the space. They make space. great toilet kits. They make, you know, yes, they, they absolutely <laughs> do. <Multi> purpose. <laughs> yeah. But of course, my personal tip for uh, toiletries is just the Ziploc bag. Works great. Don't buy one of those fancy <laughs> leather deals. Oh, oh, yeah, you need a it, toothbrush you know. and a bar of soap. That, that's, that's all you <laughs> need. Is shampoo for you? No. Nah. But with no. my... have hair. Oh, I can never tell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where's a hat? You know, 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I like those a lot. They are not as padded. They're they're more just slip covers. But if you don't need, you know, the paddedness, if you're gonna take care of your stuff, you're, you have L lenses and everything. Um, you know, I think that might be a, a pretty good. Um, well, you know. Yeah, and this one basically you've got your DSLR with one lens on it. For example, where is that 300? You just take that, and uh, generally that's not the one that I'm uh, shooting with. So I can just put this one in and. Um, wear this and then this is just for all the miscellaneous things that you carry with you as you travel around throughout the day you can actually stick a water bottle in there and just whatever just uh, like a map backpack and a few things like that mm -hmm. so basically you've got this belt you've only got two items on it and it's really pretty light so um, it's like a fanny pack. yeah it's just yeah cool. it's, yeah everybody it's loves a, a tourist with a fanny pack you know <laughs> So, um, Jester, bring me my roll aids, you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, so definitely look into the weight. Some of these bags, some of these tripods that they sell that are smaller and, and look all gadgety sometimes are not what, you know, I went on a hike with, with Alex and everyone and I was sitting there weighing this stuff on scales because ounces mattered on this hike we were going on. And I actually ended up bringing out a much taller, bigger tripod because it weighed less than that yeah, little it was one. About the same, so yeah. form factor was smaller, but it's getting mm -hmm. strapped onto the outside of my bag, so I didn't I didn't really care. And, and again, looking into these bags, uh, Mark Wallace just did this. He he sat there and weighed every single thing because he was going away for months at a time, and, and those ounces matter when you have to live out of your with everything on your back. So. Um, really think about this stuff, look at different options, you know, speed lights can replace your studio lights, different size bags that you can get rid of, you can lose trigger releases, use your timer, you can lose your filters if you don't need them, you know, look at everything and really see what you're using, what's essential, can you use higher ISO, are you going to be outdoors all the time? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just I, the I, basic weight of your bag, your starting weight of your bag, heavy. some of my bags are very heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Some of them are you're like, wow, this is this that one's heavy, but that's distributed on your waist, so it's not as bad. But some of my backpacks, I have some, um, I have the uh, the low pro one, I love it, but I pick it up and I'm like, man, this weighs just as much as my camera, you know. And now you got to put yeah. stuff in it, and it's like, mm -hmm. oof, but I can fit everything in it. So the mm -hmm. bigger your bag, the more you're gonna jam in it. Oh, yeah. pack the heavy items in your bag if you're gonna wear a backpack style. Pack them low and toward the bottom of the pack, the back, because you wanna you want that weight to be close to your lower back and closer to your body. The further or leave them home. The further away, <laughs> yeah, because the further away it is and the higher it is uh, and out, the more it's gonna Tilt you. pull. Yeah, pull you back. The more force it's gonna have, and the more it's gonna fatigue you. All right, so try to lighten your load out there if you want to still have the quality of your DSLR um, while you're hiking, while you're traveling, while you're in airports. These are a few ideas. Put your ideas in the comments. I want to tell you about PAC. They're our sponsor for this episode. Do photo walks, seminars, workshops, meetings, and photo trips, if I didn't mention that one. So check it out on the website, photoadvclub.com, and we will see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.